some little pantries on your sidewalk give shelf stable help. Welcome back to Good News Next Week, everybody. I'm James Evan Pilato for MediaMonarchy.com. After a couple of weeks off, and it was tough because sometimes there's not a lot of good news to find. But this will be kind of a double packed episode 29 of Good News Next Week. Again, continuing our outdoor summer versions of the Good News Next Week show, which is the spinoff from New World Next Week, the long running series between myself and James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. Ireland jails three top bankers over 2008 collapse course the opposite of the US. By means that could be termed dishonest, deceitful, and corrupt, they manufactured 7.2 billion euros in deposits by obvious sham transactions. Judge Martin Nolan of Ireland said as he convicted three top bankers for their role in the 2008 financial crisis. They are among the first in the world to be sent to prison for their involvement in the global meltdown eight years ago. Meanwhile, here in America, we have phony political conventions in the Wells Fargo Center with candidates bankrolled by Goldman Sachs. So there you have it. Another manufactured terror plot exposed. Canada Today bomb plot couple freed after judge rules police entrapped them. This is a deeply important story going on right now that I don't really hear many people talking about. A Canadian couple found guilty of planting homemade bombs outside a government building walk free after a court in British Columbia ruled their ruled that the pair was entrapped by the RCMP, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, into carrying out a police-manufactured crime. That's the quote. The couple posed no imminent threat, BC Supreme Court Justice Catherine Bruce said, quote, to say they were unsophisticated is generous. Both had been facing a maximum sentence of life in prison. So they get out of jail, and then what happens? They're immediately rearrested under something called a peace bond. Ask not for whom the bell tolls, right? This peace bond is essentially a, a pre-crime measure that the cops institute in the UK and just say, oh, we think that you're about to do something, so we're going to snatch you up. We've got an update article from the Toronto Star, an op-ed actually, that's asked the musical question, why do police need to manufacture terror? I think this is a really good story to remember and tell your friends or family when you're having discussions about, you know, state-sponsored false flag terror events. It's this story. And if you have any updates on this story, I keep trying to find the latest on whether or not these couples get thrown in jail again. So if you can tweet that, hopefully it's hashtag good news next week. Our cover story this week, like the explosion of our little libraries that we've talked about before and our community fridges that we've talked about before, little pantries on your sidewalk can give some shelf stable help. The little free pantry in Fayetteville, Arkansas gives community a place to donate food and supplies to people in need. The concept is simple. Anyone may place and take items inside the pantry at any time and that's it. So one thing to remember in these sorts of situations too, which are awesome, that they're starting to pop up. I, I think a lot of people said, you've seen the little libraries in your neighborhood starting to pop up and that they seem like a fun thing to kind of build. That should be a, a nice arts and crafts project that we should take on as a Good News Next Week project. One of the things to remember for these kind of situations is that you're not necessarily trying to buy up a bunch of new stuff as well to add to this thing. The idea is that you're gonna use up some of the extra things that you may have so that we're not having too much and that we're not buying too much stuff. Again, whether that stuff is for you or for people in need, a lot of times it's still just stuff. Let's use up the things that we have extras of in our house. That can fill up these nice little pantries on our sidewalk. Decentralized Uber app delivers a thousand meals in Austin, Texas. Corbett mentioned that recently on our New World Next Week episode. Meanwhile, U.S. giving back lots of land in Okinawa, but still not leaving. We discussed that a little bit this morning on the Morning Monarchy for August 15th, 2016. And this is your episode 29 of Good News Next Week for August 15th, 2016. I'm James Evan Pilato from MediaMonarchy.com. All that news is basically a week plus old. Let's get a little more new good news this week. Corrupt anti-corruption cops to pay journalists 10,000 pounds, that's about 13,000 US fiat dollars, over illegal intercepts. Detectives in an elite anti-corruption unit breached the law five times when they collected phone records for Gerard Gallagher, a former police officer turned freelance journalist who had been investigating a murder case. Meanwhile, 
discount grocery store Aldi, of which I believe there are very few here in America. I don't think I've ever actually seen the stores. They are mostly in Europe, and they're actually a German-based company. Aldi goes organic, bans toxic chemicals from their shelves. Aldi, the discount grocery store, recently announced that they will soon be supplying mostly organic products and will be banning many pesticides and toxic chemicals. We will include the link to that story as again everything we say and play is included in the show notes and of course if you always will like and share these episodes and spread them around all the social webs that helps us out and helps spread this word about independent non-commercial alternative media they ask why do you always talk about weed on good news next week because it's one of the great ways that we are winning study shows potheads pay less for legal weed the grass might be greener on the other side of legalization, but it is definitely cheaper, like here in Oregon. According to Bloomberg, the average legal marijuana user spends only 647 bucks a year on marijuana. And pot prices continue to drop in legalized states, currently at a rate of 2% per month, with the potential to shrink 25% each year. Meanwhile, again, here in Oregon, and how about this for some good news, Cannabis Fair winner to be displayed at the Oregon State Fair. In what might be a cannabis marketing first, marijuana plants will be displayed and judged at the upcoming Oregon State Fair, just like onions and pigs and pumpkins. We're doing it 4-H style, said Don Morris, executive director of the Cannabis Business Council. You get a blue, purple, or yellow ribbon. We are celebrating the plant as a farm crop from Oregon. That is some good news next week. Now, one of the reasons we were having a little bit of time off during this summer is, again, part of the fight is taking some time off for yourself and enjoy all the things that we want to keep and that we want to share and fight for in all these alternative media pursuits and adventures. Remember to have a good time. I had a great time at Pickathon, an outdoor music fest here in Oregon. For the second year in a row, I've gone and had a great time seeing and gotten to work for and behind the scenes a little bit of all kinds of bands. And I can include some, some clips and some pics right here. And perhaps we'll share those out on the tweets at Media Monarchy. And hopefully you will share the tweets. Hashtag good news next week. That's the way that we can share some of the ways that we are winning. I know you got something good going on in your town, in your area. Tweet that with us. And if you're not on the social networks, hey, guess what? I just got a regular ass email. James at MediaMonarchy.com. Love hear from you. This has been your good news next week for August 15th, 2016. I am James Evan Pilato from MediaMonarchy.com reminding you, as always, my friends, don't hate the media, become the media. Take care.